Hello. This short video will dive deeper into the crucial steps in building an intervention system. That step of ensuring a universal screening system is intact. This video is meant as an accompaniment to the 2.3 section of Module 2, Building an Intervention System in the Area of Mathematics. Let's step back for a moment and recall. In order to begin supporting well-defined interventions in predictable areas of need, we need a systematic way to determine the needs in our schools and districts. A systematic way to determine overarching needs can be described as a universal screening system. A universal screening system will assist you in using information available about individual students in order to make decisions about the overall health of core support and assist in systematically identifying areas of need. A universal screening system should include information on student attendance, behavioral data, and academic performance. We have strong national recommendations on indicators of risk for each area. We will walk through the recommendations on use of each of these areas in a comprehensive universal screening system. You may have heard this type of data collection and analysis referred to in the secondary setting as an early warning system. For attendance, we want to examine the number and percentage of students who have missed more than 10% of days. For behavior, the best predictor is office discipline referrals, specifically what percentage of students have made more than two visits to the office with an office discipline referral. In academics, the recommendations will vary by grade span. We will outline those recommendations for the area of math, specifically in this video. For each area, we will customize the next steps based on whether we are meeting the goal of 80% of students responding with core support alone, or when we are looking at a universal screening system, do more than 20% or less than 20% of students require supplemental support. In a previous video contained within Module 2.2, Susan Laney outlined the steps when examining all areas of the universal screening system, attendance, behavior, and academics. For this short video, we will focus in on this academic area, this area of academic risk. As noted earlier, the thresholds for risk will vary based on content area and grade level. Our first step with academics is to identify the percentage of students who show academic risk. Modules 2.2 and 2.3 provide more specific guidance on how to identify risk and build intervention systems in response to common areas of difficulty in literacy and math. Let's review the general guidance that will get us started in building an intervention system. In grades K-3, Students are typically identified as at risk in academics if they have had a grade retention or score below research based thresholds on multiple measures of early literacy or math. This is where our traditional universal screening tools, such as curriculum based measures, are utilized. In grades 4 through 8, academic risk can be determined by falling below targets on multiple measures of reading and/or math failing core classes, historical repeated failure on summative assessments, and grade retention. In grades 9 through 12, academic risk can be determined by failing core classes, poor credit earning behavior, multiple course failures, historical repeated failure on summative assessments, and grade retention. If the percentage of students demonstrating academic risk is less than 20% of this grade or school, then we can begin matching those students to supplemental interventions. The remainder of Module 2.3 will focus in on the specific math supplemental strategies that are appropriate for students at each level. If the percentage of students demonstrating academic risk is more than 20%, it is recommended to engage in core problem solving before determining the percentage of students a supplemental intervention system can support. Your NCMTSS team has provided an intervention resource planning tool in Module 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3 that can assist teams in determining the resources needed to support supplemental and intensive interventions.
In this scenario, the school will be intervening at the core level with academic strategies, as well as intervening with a supplemental intervention. Within the area of math, we must examine mul multiple measures to assess risk. Students that require supplemental intervention in the area of math are not students that only fail to attain one standard or have a low score on one assessment. Students requiring supplemental intervention should have multiple measures of math that demonstrate a deficit. Whenever teams are unsure of student need for intervention, they should seek to confirm the risk through another measure. In addition, it is always important to note that math intervention is provided in addition to core instruction. Many times, students with math difficulties that persist over time have received less instruction with less rigor than students without math difficulties. This quickly becomes an opportunity gap for students that struggle in that they are not provided equitable access to high quality instruction. So within math, what are some areas that we can examine to determine if a student requires math intervention? In kindergarten and first grade, Research has identified several areas of early numeracy skills to examine. These are not the entirety of the instruction that should be provided to students in math, but they represent key indicators of early number knowledge. These include assessment students, assessing students in rote counting and number identification fluency, discrimination of quantity, and strategic counting. Many universal screening measures, such as Dibbles Math and Ames Web, include measures of early numeracy such as these to determine risk. As stated before, if large percentages of students in the early grades in a school demonstrate deficits in these early numeracy skills, school teams will wish to intensify core instruction for all students first, in addition to providing supplemental intervention to those with the largest deficits. In second through fifth grades, Teams may wish to examine student performance on summative assessments, such as benchmarks and EOGs, as one piece of data around math performance. In addition, measures of mixed computation fluency and grade level math concepts and applications can be examined through standard universal screening measures. These scores for students should be compared against a research-based criterion or norm group to determine risk. Again, if large percentages of students in these grades in a school demonstrate deficits, school teams will wish to intensify core instruction for all students first, in addition to providing supplemental intervention to those with the largest deficits. Beginning in about sixth grade, teams may wish to begin the examination of historical math data through past universal screening performance and summative assessments to determine whether additional universal screening measures need to be administered. If large numbers of students demonstrate math deficits from these data sources, teams will likely wish to administer another universal screening measure, such as a mixed computation fluency or math concepts and applications assessment. These pieces of data together will allow school teams to more accurately intensify core instruction for all and also provide supplemental intervention to those with the largest deficits. Finally, beginning in about ninth grade, most schools will not need to administer new math assessments universally. The amount of historical data demonstrating student risk is typically sufficient to make determinations regarding intensifications to core and student intervention needs in math. Some schools may wish to use a multiple gating technique. This is where all historical data is examined first, and then those students suspected of math deficits from these data sources are administered a typical universal screening measure to confirm that risk. These additional measures may include measures of computational fluency and knowledge of general math concepts. Hello. This short in a previous video,